Happy Easter, I'm Jen and welcome to Life Springs Online. We are so excited that you chose to worship with us today. If this is your first time, please take a moment and text the word guest to the number on your screen so that we can connect with you and give you a free gift. If you would, take a moment and share this broadcast. And don't forget to like and subscribe on all of our social media platforms. Before we get into the online service today, let's talk about the different in-person service options at Life Springs Church. Let's start with the Stanley campus. We have service on Thursday nights at 7 p.m., Saturdays at 6 p.m. for young adults ages 18 to 25, and Sundays at 9, 10, 15, and 11:30 a.m. At the Western Harnett campus, we meet every Sunday at 10.30 a.m. at Western Harnett High School. And for those of you with kids, go ahead and let's get them ready for their own service by heading over to lifesprings.online for a virtual kids service right on the homepage. Make sure that they grow spiritually too. We want to make sure you stay up to date on all that's going on at Life Springs Church. So text 411 to the number on your screen and you'll see everything going on at Life Springs Church. Now, here's Pastor Shane with some more information on giving. Hey everybody, thank you so much for tuning in today and thank you so much for your generosity. Because you give, we're able to make a difference in Lee County, Harnett County, and beyond. I hope you guys are enjoying this series on Catfish Christians. I know for me, it's reminded me that years ago when I made a commitment to Christ, the enemy catfished me by saying, you can't afford to give. But God reminded me, I can't afford not to give. What a blessing it is to give. It's better to give than to receive. So I encourage you to, to do the same thing, to give. If this is your church home, hey, we encourage you to do that. If it's, if it's not, you're still trying to figure it out, hey, we encourage you not to give. So right now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to pray with you. Let's pray. Father, we praise you. We thank you, God, for your word. We thank you, God, for this series on Catfish Christians. And I pray, God, right now that if someone's been catfished by the enemy, by him telling them that they can't give because of X, Y, or Z. I pray, God, that you would remind them what a blessing it is to give. I pray blessings over those who have to give and those that don't. We love you. And we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, thank you so much for tuning in. And if you'd like to give, you can go to lifesprings.online backslash giving. Hope to see you soon. Well, that's all for this week. Don't forget to text 411 to stay up to date on all things at Life Springs Church. And again, if this is your first time, don't forget to text guests so that we can give you your free gift before you leave today. And we'll see you soon.
Open 
Put your hands together right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to do me a favor. I'm going to get you right back up in just a second. But have a seat and think about this video. And then we're going to get right back up and worship. It's Friday. Jesus is praying. Peter is asleep. Judas is betraying. But Sunday's coming. It's Friday. Pilots struggling. The council is conspiring. The crowd is vilifying. 
They don't even know that Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The disciples are running like sheep without a shepherd. Mary's crying. Peter is denying. But they don't know that Sundays are coming. It's Friday. The Romans beat my Jesus. They robe him in scar. They crown him with thorns. But they don't know that Sunday's coming. It's Friday. See Jesus walking to Calvary. His blood dripping. His body stumbling. And his spirit's burdened. But you see, it's only Friday. Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The world's winning. People are sinning and evil's grinning. It's Friday. The soldiers nailed my Savior's hands to the cross. They nailed my Savior's feet to the cross. And then they raised him up next to criminals. It's Friday. But let me tell you something. Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The disciples are questioning what has happened to their king. And the Pharisees are celebrating that their scheming has been achieved. But they don't know. It's only Friday. Sunday's coming. It's Friday. He's hanging on the cross, feeling forsaken by his father left alone and dying. Can nobody save him? Oh, it's Friday. But Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The earth trembles. The sky grows dark. My king yields his spirit. It's Friday. Hope is lost. Death has won. Sin has conquered, and Satan's just a laughing. It's Friday. Jesus is buried. A soldier stands guard, and a rock is rolled into place. But it's Friday. It is only Friday. Sunday is a coming. Come on, put your hands together. Stand with me. Stand in this place right now. I want you to know something. It ain't Friday no more. Sunday's already happened. And in case nobody told you, my Savior's alive. And he's at the right hand of the Father. And he's praying for you. And you. And you. And you. And you. And he's calling your name right now. And he's wanting you to worship. Now, I don't know where you are with God right now. I don't know if you know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior or not. And I get it. There's a lot of religions in this world today. And there's a lot of people trying to discredit Christianity. But let me tell you something. If you go through the tomb of Muhammad, you'll find Muhammad. If you go through the tomb of Buddha, you'll find Buddha. If you go through the tomb of Elvis, you'll see the bones of Elvis. But if you go through the tomb of Jesus, you'll see a sign that says, He's not here. He's risen just as He said. Now, I don't know what you believe, but let me just tell you, there's an avalanche of evidence to believe that Jesus Christ is who He said He was. If He was a liar, wouldn't you think under that horrific beating that he would have relented? I mean, I've seen people give up their life for a lot less. A man wouldn't hold on to a lie that long. If he was a lunatic, would that many people be wanting to worship him? If, if it was all a conspiracy, did you know over 500 people, over 500 people saw him after he resurrected from the grave? Did you know it's recorded in Roman history. Listen, we shouldn't even know his name. He was a carpenter that was 33 years old in a dusty Palestine. Why do we even know who he is? But yet this weekend, 
millions and millions and millions of people from all around the world will gather because they believe that a Jewish carpenter died on a cross. Come on! And resurrected from the grave. And let me tell you where all this is going in case you don't know. Let me just tell you that there's a lot of, I'm talking same thing, I'm talking presidents claim that they put their faith in that man and he changed their life. I'm talking there's been rich people, poor people, blind people, Hispanic people, American people, African people, Haiti, Haitian people, every, every, every tribe and every nation. I'm talking about non-marijuana smoking sane individuals who say, I put my faith in Jesus Christ and I was set free and I've got peace and I've got hope and I've got joy and I've got security. I want to invite you to be a part of that group and it's going to all culminate until one day a trumpet's going to blow and all the dead in Christ are going to rise and those people who have put their faith in what Jesus did for them on the cross will be resurrected from the grave and they'll be called up to meet him in the air and we'll gather around his throne people from Africa people from Haiti people from America people from everywhere Europe everywhere Asia will gather around his throne singing worthy 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 is the Lamb of God Come on, I want you to lift your voices, lift your minds, lift your hands. Let's give Him praise. I like we're standing there on that day. We praise the name of our Father. We praise the name of our Savior. Let's blow the top off this place. It's Easter. It, it is Sunday. Come on, let's worship the Lord. Do you believe that? Do you believe the story? Oh Lord. Come on, sing it to him. Sing it to him. Come on, he's worthy. I want to hear you right now. You're the guest of honor here, God. Father, I thank you for this moment. I thank you for these folks that have come out to worship you. I thank you for those that are watching right now online and all those who have placed their faith in what you did for them on the cross so that now our debt was paid. And I'm going to talk about that in this message. And we're going to end this message. It's an emotional weekend. For Christians, sometimes people come on Easter and they're like, I don't know why y'all get so excited. And it's a little bit over the top feeling for people who are not used to being in that. And You know, here's my deal. If, if people will cheer like this at a, super, it's a Super Bowl game, at an NCAA tournament, and nobody on that team died for them, and they'll yell like this, how much more should Christians be blowing the top off of churches this weekend? How much more should we be praising you? You did it, God. You did it for us. And now I stand here, just finished a series on how to know you're saved. And I can stand here and I know without a shadow of a doubt, as good as my name is Dale Sauls, and I'm standing right here in Lee County right now, as good as I know anything, I know I'm going to be with you in heaven for eternity. I know that and I'm grateful for it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this opportunity to be here. Thank you for this Easter weekend. Thank you for dying for our sins and resurrected in three days. Let us give you the honor that you're due. And I pray that this weekend, come on somebody, I need to hear you right now, join me in this. I pray that this weekend a revival breaks out across this nation. If, the, if there's ever been a time that our country needed to come back to this, it is now. If there's ever been a time people needed to live under the banner that Jesus is the only way, it is today. Help us, God. Let this weekend usher in a great last day revival so that you'll come on back quickly. I, I, I find myself, the older I get, praying like John the Revelator prayed it, that when he ended the book of Revelations, he said, even so, Lord Jesus, come quickly. And as I watch this world right now, I pray, even, Lord, even so, Lord Jesus, come quickly. Let this message radiate, resonate with everybody that's watching online, whether it be on demand or in this place or wherever. Let this message get out that Jesus paid it all 
so we don't have to. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, say that name with me. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen and amen, amen. Would you celebrate with me right now again? Come on. The name of Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to welcome all of those in here. I want to welcome those that are in our lounge or in our party room that are watching. I want to welcome those that are watching this at home. Maybe you're watching this on Easter Sunday morning, or maybe you're watching this on Saturday evening before Easter, or maybe you're watching this a year later, or maybe you're watching this months later, and maybe maybe it's Christmas and you're watching this. You're watching it on demand. No matter where you are, I want you to know the truth of Easter is still alive. Come on, somebody. He still died for you, and he still resurrected, and he still wants a relationship with you. Would y'all do me a favor because you're in the broadcast auditorium and people can hear you in here would you do me a favor and welcome all those no matter where they are get loud with me right now come on thank you thank you for being here Hey, if, you, uh, if you're here today and, um, and you want to follow along with the summer, uh, sermon, I encourage you to do that. Just go ahead right now and get out your phone and text 919-586-8900. Text sermon. And um, if you are watching this on demand, you'll be getting another sermon for that week. But uh, for the rest of you, go ahead and text sermon and you'll be able to get this sermon works for this week. And um, we're glad that you're here and, and be a part of this. Today, we're kicking off a brand new series and it's called, ready, one, two, three, it ain't over. How many of you like that? Come on, somebody, right? Here's the deal. Down, but not out. Down, but not out. Anybody ever been down? But just because you're down don't mean you're out. Maybe you're there today, and I want you to know something, that Easter, if there's ever been a story to tell you that it ain't over till God says it's over, Easter is the story to do that. And here's the deal. The reason why, if you notice the video, and if you don't know anything about the gospel, then let me just tell you, the video we showed during worship, it talked about the idea that it's Friday because Jesus was crucified on Friday. And they thought it was all over. But let me just tell you, when Sunday came around, he burst from the grave with resurrection power. And so that's the reason we say it's Friday right now. It looks down right now, but Sunday's coming. And the same thing's true for you right now. Today, it may be a Friday for you. It may be a down day for you. And I know everybody talks about Friday's party in the weekend. It's the weekend. But it was the day our Savior was crucified. Listen, it might be your Friday, but I want you to know something. With Jesus Christ, there's a Sunday a coming for you. Come on. I, anybody got a faith? Can I hear an amen on that one? Sundays are coming for you. So go ahead and take a picture of this and let everybody know it on this Easter weekend that it's Friday, but Sunday's coming. Because we all like a comeback story, right? Everybody, how many of you like to root for the underdog? Hold your hands up good and high. You like to root for the underdog? Uh, this past weekend, we had a, um, we had a uh, Cry Freedom uh, training seminar. And for those that don't know, we've been um, supporting Cry Freedom for a lot of years, ending human trafficking. And what we didn't know is because of where we are in proximity to Raleigh and Greensboro and Fayetteville, that Sanford has had a growing number of human trafficking cases and things in this region. And so we're going to get involved, and we've already got involved in helping end that. Can we just thank God for that? Can I hear it? Amen. <laughs> And so a lot of, I don't know, several of you were there, a lot of people were there for that training, and, um, and at the end of it, Pastor Daniel came up to end it, and he said, I just want to give a thanks publicly right here to a lady who don't get a lot of credit, don't get a lot of PR in the church, don't get a lot of press time, because she likes to be behind the scenes. He said, um, Melissa Sauls, Pat, my wife, Melissa Sauls, he said, because of her, we are doing Cry Freedom, and we're doing that, and he made a statement in that, he said, she roots for the underdog. And, and I thought, I never really thought about my wife like that, but she's right. For those that don't know, um, how many of you ever done Night to Remember or Night to Shine in our church? That, that was my wife. She's the one who did that. She's the one who helped bring Cry Freedom to this thing. She's the one who kind of has been the inspiration behind a lot. of. She's always looking out for the one that other people don't seem to be looking out for. And then I got a little offended. I thought, is that why she married me? And I've been trying to dwell on that all week. Like, I'm, I don't want to be mad about it, but I'm having a hard time. You understand, right? Because everybody likes to root for the underdog. Everybody wants to see. In fact, for those of you who know, know I'm a Christian. And because I'm a Christian, I'm a North Carolina State fan because that's what Christians do is they become North Carolina State fans. And um, if anybody wants to know why I'm a North Carolina State fan as a Christian, let me tell you the reason. Because it takes a lot of perseverance to be an NC State fan. Come on, somebody, right? So, so it takes a lot of tenacity. Let me tell you the reason why. My dad was getting his master's degree at NC State in 1983 when the Cinderella team with Jim Valvano. If, you don't, if some of you are too young to remember that, yeah, you can see some of you doing that. Some of you are like, 1983? I wasn't even born yet. And that's why we hate you. All right, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding, just kidding, we don't hate you. But, but, but 1983, you Google it, the Cinderella team, and, and they won it all. And so we didn't have a choice. With Daddy being a student there, then win it all. We had to be 
State fans, because here's the deal. Everybody likes a comeback story. Come on, right? Don't you like to watch a movie of a comeback story? Everybody likes Rudy, right? Come on, right? Everybody likes the comeback story. Everybody likes the comeback movie. Everybody likes the one that wins at the end, and everybody likes that thing. Easter is the greatest comeback story ever. Because when it looked like Jesus was down, and Satan was celebrating, and probably all of his demons, we killed him, he's dead. I don't know how demons talk, but I think they talk something like that. He's dead. We killed him. And they're all celebrating and all of hell is excited. They don't know. They don't know that it's just Friday. That he may look down, but he ain't out. Here's the deal. What they don't know is that it was all part of God's plan to start out with. Friday was not an accident to Jesus. It won't like he said, oh, snap. They killed me. It won't like that, okay? It won't like, wow, I got a sucker punch. They, I, didn't know, I didn't know they were going to do that to me. It wasn't like that at all. I want you to understand something. Jesus was born to die. I don't want you to get this twisted because I don't want you to misunderstand our series. When I say it ain't over, down and not out, some of you are like, I don't know if I'm going to make it. Jesus knew he was going to make it. Listen, Satan did not kill Jesus. Let me go a step further for those of you who like history. The Jews did not kill Jesus. The Romans did not kill Jesus. Let me put you at ease. Your sin has, is not it didn't kill Jesus. You see, you couldn't kill Jesus if you wanted to. Why is it Jesus died? Because he laid his life down. He was in control the whole time. Check out what he said right here. He said, though no one can take my life from me, I sacrifice it how? For I have the authority to lay it down when I want to. And also, watch this, to take it up again. Sunday is coming. Have I told you that? For this is what my Father has commanded. He was just doing it because God told him to do it. You see, it was Friday. Jesus was laying down his life. But even in laying down his life, he was still the champion. He was still the victor. He was still the conqueror. You say, how is that, Dale? How could somebody be a champion whenever they die? Well, maybe you've never known about our soldiers who lay down their life for our freedom. They're, they're champions. Can I hear an amen? amen? You see, in a very real way, that's exactly what Jesus did. He was paying the price for somebody else. It wasn't even his sin. And by doing it, he showed he was the champion of love. Amen. Look at what this Bible verse says. It, says. it says, for God made Christ who never sinned. He never had any sin in him at all. But God made him to be this offering for our sin. So every lie you told was hanging on the cross that day. Every lustful thought you had, every addiction that you've been involved in, every impropriety, every lapse of judgment, the thing you feel the most guilty about right now and don't even know if you should ever come to church because the, the top may cave in on you. It hung on the cross that day and was nailed there with Jesus Christ. When he hung there, he looked across the generations because God is all-knowing. And I believe with all my heart, you were on his mind. You crossed his mind. To be the offering for us so that we could be made right with God through Christ. You see, Jesus satisfied your debt. And we owed it to him because he laid his life down. No one took his life from him. The people may have thought they took his life. The Jews probably thought that they killed him, those, the, the Sanhedrin and the Pharisees. Satan and his demons may have even thought that they killed him. But let me just be clear he laid it down, but the whole time he was in full control. And he knew that he was coming back in three days. And on day three, he proved to the world he was in control the whole time. If they ever thought anything else, then I'm telling you, Satan and all of his demons were scared. And all the Jews, in fact, they made up lies to tell that they stole the body of Jesus. Go read the Gospels, that they stole the body of Jesus out of the tomb. Because they were trying to keep it under wraps. Because why? Jesus showed the world he was down, but he won't out. Wow. Jesus showed the world there's a big difference between Friday and Sunday. Jesus showed the world he is the victor in the name of Jesus Christ. He's the King of kings and Lord of lords. No one, 
Not only, not only did he show the world he was all-powerful, but you know what else he showed the world? Is that you and I, you see, hell was never made for people. It was made for Satan and the demons. And Satan's always wanted you to be in hell because you know why? God loves you so much he let Jesus die on a cross for you. And if he can't get to God, what does he do? He get to the ones that God loves the most, which is you and I. And the thing about, about Easter that we celebrate, the thing about what Jesus did for us on the cross is not only does it show that Jesus is the victor, but you know what it also showed to the Satan and the demons? That you and I don't have to go to hell either. That we can be set free in the name of Jesus Christ. And not only that, we can be victors to that not only because of what he did for us you and i we can live a life of victory as well did you know that you don't have to walk around defeated you don't have to walk around discouraged you don't have to walk around down you don't want to have to walk around beat up you don't have to walk around with misery you have been set free in the power of jesus it can live in you as well Look at what Jesus said. What is what he said? He said, the scripture of the, the Spirit of God that raised Jesus from the dead. That same Spirit, what? Ready? One, two, three. Lives in you. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, that same power of God that raised Jesus from the dead can live in you. And just as God raised Christ from Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by this same Spirit living within you. That's the great news about Easter is not only that your sins are paid, but the Holy Spirit of God can take up residence in you and you can live as an overcomer. Amen. Come on, I was hoping for a greater amen than that. Can I get an amen right now? Amen. You can live in victory. You don't have to be an addict the rest of your life. You don't have to be living with all these Attacks that you're having the rest of your life. You don't have to be beat down and think you're a nobody the rest of your life. You don't have to do that. You can, you're going to go through tough times. But even when you go through tough times, you've got the promise of victory because the Spirit of God lives in you. I love this passage right here. Notice what it says. It says in Romans, it says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? It's a rhetorical question because the answer is who? Nobody. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble, if you've got trouble... Does that mean, oh, God don't love me. He's punishing me for something I did in high school. Is that what it means? He's punishing me for my first marriage and what happened. It, shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword, is that what's going to separate you from the love of God? As it is written, for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. See, that's, the way, that's why it's so hard. How many of you have a tough life sometimes? Hold your hands up. Good night. That's why it's so tough in this world that we're living in. Because this is Friday for a lot of you. And some of you right now are living in your Friday. Some of, we get down a lot of times. But that's not where the verse ends. What is what it says right here? It says, no, in all these things we are ready, one, two, three, more than conquerors. More than conquerors through him who loved us. We're down, but not out. I don't even know what this means, to be honest. I don't know how to be more than a conqueror. You either won or you didn't. You know, right? I guess it's either you, you either beat them or you didn't. But what Jesus said, he created another category. He said, you're not even going to just survive in this world. You're going to thrive in this world. Because I don't want you to be the tail. I made you to be the head. You're down, but you're not out. It ain't over until Jesus says it's over. And the promise a victory is for me and you. And even though this nation right now, in my opinion, in a lot of ways is down. It's been down. Can I get an amen on that? Amen. I think Democrat, Republicans, Libertarians, and those that I don't care can amen that, right? Come on. Maybe your family right now has been down. You didn't think you were going to still be single. You didn't think that you, you thought your spouse would have paid child support. You didn't know your siblings were going to be like they are, and you didn't know that Somebody you love was going to die and you feel alone. Maybe right now your family's down. Maybe you personally have been knocked down. You, you've been tempted in ways that you didn't think you'd ever be tempted. You've gone back to some things you didn't think you'd ever go back to. You've, you've had to fight some demons in your life. You didn't know that you'd ever. Maybe you've been knocked down a little bit. But let me just make sure you're clear. You can get up again. Amen. You can't. That's what this whole series is about. In fact, let me tell you the theme verse for this series. The verse we're going to use for the remainder of this series is right here. It says, we are pressed on every side by troubles. Can I get, if, even if you're not a church person, can you amen that? Amen. 
But we are not crushed. We are perplexed. Now, I scratch my head a lot like, Shazam, what's going on, right? Come on, somebody, right? We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. I'm not going to get negative and down. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we get up again. Anyway, anyway. <laughs> children of the 90s, some of you. Anyway, but we get knocked down, one, two, three, but what? We are not destroyed. Those, through suffering, our bodies continue to share in the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be seen in our bodies. See, some of you just want Sundays, but you can't have Sundays without a few Fridays. Come on, somebody, right? We get knocked down, but we get up again. This series is going to help you get up. Don't miss it. I'm going to give you hope. I'm going to tell, we're going to tell you how to find victory. We're going to fire you up. We're going to motivate. It's going to be an encouragement. How many of you want some encouragement? Hold it. It's going to be an encouragement. We're going to talk to you about how to get up again if you've been knocked down. Maybe you've sinned. Maybe you've been, maybe when the coronavirus happened, it knocked you spiritually completely off track and you don't know how to. This is a great time to come back home. You got knocked down, but you can get up again. It ain't over until God says it's over. Amen. You're down, but you're not out. Because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, you can get up again. Amen. Now, I want to end this message today with one passage that Jesus, um, one, one passage he said on the cross, one line, it's a, uh, he said it on the cross, on one line, and it was in a moment when it ter- certainly looked down. It was in that moment that if Satan and his demons were celebrating and having a party with that, yeah, you know, kind of voice, right? It would have been at this moment. They thought it was all. It looked down. It looked like everything had been lost. It looked like Jesus had lost the battle. He came to win on earth. It was at that moment that he said this. He said, Jesus said, read it one, two, three. It is finished. Come on, a little louder. It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. It is finished. Now, I'm sure... You can take that a lot of ways. Probably some of them thought that meant he's given up his life and he's finally surrendering. He's throwing in the white flag. He's he's taking a knee. He's doing whatever. He's giving up the ghost. He's doing whatever. For a lot of people, they thought probably he was quitting because he realized he had lost. But let me make sure you're clear. Jesus is not a quitter. He's the great finisher. There's a difference in finishing and quitting. And he was finishing he won't quit. And let me tell you the word that he used there. It was actually one word. It was not three words. It is finished. It is one word. If I can say it right in the Greek, it is telelistia. It means, it means to be paid for. It was a word that would be used like whenever a merchant would say, when you would say how much and you're paying, and he would say telelistia. That means, in other words, you have paid this in full. And there's no more, you don't have to pay for this anymore. You paid this, like, wouldn't you like to hear telelistia, telelistia at when on your mortgage? Come on, can I hear an amen, right? Like it is paid in full. Can I hear an amen right now, right? On your car, on your student loans. Come on, I'm gonna shout. Somebody's gonna shout for it's over with, right? Like, or this might be what a servant would say whenever they would come back to their master after he would give them a job. He would come back and they would say, This is the job, and the master would look at him and they would say, Teletilicia. That means it is finished. I have finished the work. I want you to know what he was saying. He looked up at his heavenly father and he said, Listen, Teletilicia, it means that it is finished. I have paid the price. The work you sent me here is done. There's nothing else to be completed. I finish the job. So what was he finishing? What did he finish? Well, there's a whole lot of things he finished. I could go on and on and on with things he finished. If you know anything about the Old Testament and the New Testament, I could give you a lot of theology, but I ain't got time to do that. But I just decided we'd end this message with a little boxing thing. Come on, can we do that right now, right? Can y'all imagine how Satan would have been like, y'all ever seen a boxing match, right? Ten, nine, come on, what? All right, you got it, right? What if that was going on in the heavenlies? And when he said, it is finished, what is it he is finishing? Ten, Jesus broke down the walls between us, and now there's no more white and black, and there's no more Jew and Gentile. There's no more none of that. The walls, remember, we're children of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Ten, 
nine. Jesus canceled the reign of death. We don't have to be afraid of dying any longer. Eight, Jesus canceled the mortgage claim of Satan against us and freed us. Can we give a praise break right here in the name of Jesus? Seven, Jesus canceled sin's power. Come on, one, two, three, six. Jesus defeated Satan. Come on. Five, Jesus paid the death penalty for all. Come on. Four, Jesus made peace between God and man. Three, Jesus gave us personal access to God. Two, Jesus gave salvation. It's time for a praise break right there. Come on. And here's the whole premise of this series. One, two, three. One, Jesus made a way for us to live with resurrection power. It is finished. Hallelujah. Come on, stand to your feet. It's Sunday. It's Sunday. But it ain't over. It ain't over. Say it ain't over. Come on, a little louder. It ain't over. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Right now. I'm going to let these guys get in place. Let's don't move the TV or anything right yet. Let's just get still for a second. Somebody, Holy Spirit's doing a work right here. Everybody get set up. Get still. Nobody looking around. Don't you let the devil let you miss this moment. If you're in this place today, and you say, Dale, I don't know. I don't know if I've placed my faith in Jesus or not. I don't know. I've been down. Maybe you backslid. Maybe you used to think you were close to God and life happened. You got knocked down. Either way, if you feel far from God today, we're not going to get into, oh, I got saved. I used to be saved. We didn't get into all that. But right now, you feel far from God. You want to get close again. You want to get back up. Hold your hand up. Ready? One, two, three. Raise your hand right now. I see your hands. Yes, yes. Keep them up. Keep them up. I feel far from God, but I want to get close again. Come on. One, two, three. Hold them up. Don't you miss this moment. This is your moment. I don't feel as close as I need to be to God right now. I'm going to get closer. Come on. Come on right now. Father, I want you to pray this prayer. Say, put that resurrection power in me, God. Put that Holy Spirit power in me. I've been knocked off track a little bit. I look up and there's distance between me and God and I don't want there to be any distance between us. I want to be close. I want to get back on track. God, right now, this Easter, this Easter, I'm tired of playing games. I'm getting closer. I'm I'm playing it all aside. I'm getting closer to you in the name of Jesus. I'm coming back home. Maybe you're in this place today and you're not even sure you're saved. And a lot of you raised your hand and I know exactly why you raised your hand, but some of you might have raised your hand because you're not even sure you're a Christian. Maybe you're watching online and you're saying, I don't know what to do. What do I do to get saved? Just do this right here. Say, God, I believe. I believe you did die for me. I believe you did rise again in three days. I believe the Easter story. I believe that you paid for my sin on that cross. And today, today, I give you me. If you'll accept me, God, I'll accept you. And from this day forward, we'll do life as best friends. I won't always be perfect, but I'm going to stay committed. to getting closer and closer to you every day. Jesus' name we pray. Can we put our hands together for those that made a commitment to Christ right now? Come on. Amen. Now here's what I want you to do. The Bible says once you believed, you should be baptized. Some of you believed a long time ago and you've never been baptized and you think it's just a church thing. It's not a church thing. It's a Jesus thing, okay? In fact, it cost us our water bill to do it, okay? So it's no reason for us to do it. Why will we do it? We do it because Jesus told you to do it. It's time for you to step up. So we're going to have baptisms next weekend. Quit putting it off. Some of you right now, you got chill bumps because you think I'm talking to you because you've been thinking about baptism and you're like, this is so weird. I feel an unction of the Holy Spirit right now for me to tell you, God told me to tell you, it is time for you to be baptized. So I want you right now to get your phone out. If you wait, you won't do it. Do it right now. 
text 919-586-8900, text NEXT. There'll be a link there to about if you want to get baptized, that's your next step, then you go ahead and go ahead and click and get baptized. Get on that rest roster to get baptized. This quit waiting and let's do that. Come on, can I hear an amen? Okay, we need to get this TV out of the way, somebody right here, because we're going to celebrate. Who's ready to celebrate right now? You see, we got, come on, yeah, amen. We got a Savior. We got a Savior who is a beautiful Savior. We got a Savior who paid the ultimate price, and we're here to celebrate who He is. What a beautiful name the name of Jesus is. Can I hear it, amen? Come on, let's worship the Lord together.
Thank you guys so much for watching with us. We hope you heard from God today. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and text this number here if you made any commitments to God, need prayer, or if you're ready to take your next step. We'll see you again next week.